Rob's trying to climb up on my tire. I don't think it's gonna work. I don't have 40s like you. Go for it. Send it. Oh, you know what? You're probably gonna rip my fender off. You're about to just go straight into my fender. I have faith in you. Oh, no. No way. Creep it. You got another inch or two. All right, that's good. You're about, you're about half an inch away. Oh my goodness. That's a good picture though, hold it. Dude, I would be sick if I did my, mine on the other side. Oh, dude. You're pretty flexed back here. You're going down, yeah. Well done, well done. You guys are not following the Instagram account. You guys are messing up. We have Rob's monstrosity of a Gladiator Rubicon. My 20, uh, my 20 Laramie, but then we have the TRX. Dude, you go ham in this thing. What, 1,400 yeah, miles in this thing right now? In the Does truck come with 325s? Um, yeah, stock, everything's stock That's right insane, now. dude, that's a wide boy right there. Yep, yep, comes with the Bilstein shocks. My gosh, dude. Adaptive suspension. Yeah, this thing's ridiculous. Yeah, a little bit dirty, but <laughs> it's properly used for sure. Yeah, she's dirty. She's definitely dirty. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much it's pretty, pretty much the much same. Brand new. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just what do you got? Seventeen hundred miles in the dash. I mean, it's pretty much the same interior as my yeah, Laramie, no. essentially. What's the deal, bro? Why do you got why do you got tire missing from the front tires here? Oh, it's fourteen hundred miles in this thing, dude. Come on now, what are you doing? Uh, nothing much, just you know, breaking it in. So I don't know why they added Jeez, a bunch of plastic. That is so. extremely covered. Well, they did a good job of hiding the Hellcat. Oh yeah, somewhere oh, under uh, oh, that, somewhere that, under this pile of plastic right here is a Hellcat plastic, motor. Basically, yeah. So that supercharger is up there, but not everything stock right now. Nothing done to it. Right now. Right now. Keywords right now. Right it sounds now. like you have some plans to do something pretty Ooh, big. Maybe a cam. Maybe, maybe a cam. Ooh, okay. Okay. Maybe a big, uh, an exhaust system. Maybe straight pipe. Who knows? Ooh. Seven miles per gallon. Seven, right. seven miles per gallon. Seven miles per gallon. Seven miles per gallon. That is that because you drive a certain kind of way or is yeah. that just kind of standard on a TRX? Dude, that's yeah, insane. Yeah. Are you just sending this thing in four wheel drive too or what? Always. Like, how do you get tires? Always. Always. How do you get chunks of tire missing from the front too? That's what I want to know. Rob, this guy's, this guy's a maniac. Gnarly. I think he's a little crazier than you are. Uh, you, you might, you might be beat. I think by next weekend we're gonna have some, uh, we're gonna have some, some interesting, interesting content for you guys. We also may or may not be racing this with. Eh, stay tuned. We got some, we got some races coming up on this thing, and some off-road shenanigans, shenanigans, shenanigans for sure. So on the Ram TRX for maximum airflow. And I believe your hood, your hood louvers are, are oh, yeah. actual functional too, right? Yeah, so what, uh, the hood louvers? You mean these two things right here? The air vents on the hood, on the yeah, outside of it? So, yeah. They're actually, they're, they're true yeah, air vents, so they, right? Yeah, so they connect to right here. There you go, yeah. It goes to, go, intake, yep. it goes so to the intake, intake manifold. right there, perfect. So maximum yeah. airflow on this thing is what they're going for. Dude, they put so much plastic so on that much thing. Plastic. That's ridiculous. All and right here, mine are all blocked off because, well, I don't have a Hellcat, so. Soon. Oh, you think so, huh? Maybe. Wouldn't be a bad day right or there, putting a supercharger. That'd be cool too. Basically the same thing as a Ram. Just the only difference it had, mainly the difference is, is the engine. 6.2 supercharged, 702 horsepower, not 707. Oh, I heard you're buying a whole camera system and going Ooh, dumb on maybe, YouTube. Maybe I'll be starting my. Your first video is coming. Your first video is coming sooner than we think. Me eating a raptor. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. But no, lots of content to come on this thing right here. A lot of fun content. This man right here does not hold back yep. on a fun time no, whatsoever. Be, I mean, look at this thing. It's got. I have some other surprises too, so. We're staying tuned, brother. We're staying tuned. And just like that, all this TRX talk has me out here looking for some dirt to play in, except I'm not trying to pull a George in the TRX and completely drench my interior in dirt. Also, it's 95 degrees out here, so. I'm cool with that. Alrighty, step number one, we're gonna hold that traction button right there. Traction is off, hold it a few more seconds, and, oh, I forgot! You can't disable ESC on this truck, no! So, on my Silverado, if you hold the traction button for long enough, I think it's like five seconds or like 10, I don't know, something like that, but if you hold it long enough, not only will traction control turn off, but then it'll also disable ESC, which is like the full ability to send it. So unfortunately we don't have uh, that ability in this truck, but 
traction control off. We'll get what we can get, and we won't throw a fit. Let's see what she can do. Three, two, one. Half send, baby! Oh, it's weak. That's weak. It killed power. It completely, well, hold on, hold on. I think traction control is actually on. I'm an idiot. Okay, traction's now off. There we go. Again, three, two, one. Half send, baby! Okay, okay, all right, well it still it still killed power just as much as traction being on, so I don't see the point of that thing at all, to be totally honest. If you guys have any idea what the purpose of that is, then let me know in the comments below, but I see no difference whatsoever. This is still the strangest thing to me. Honestly, I've had this truck for what, a year and a half now, since March of 2020. That's about a year and a half. And if I don't drive this truck for even a couple of days, it's really hard getting used to that. If I drive my Silverado and the column shifter is naturally what I gravitate to, it's really strange getting used to this again, even for a couple of days not being in this truck. I love it, it's, it's convenient, it's that, absolutely. But it's also very bizarre using a knob to switch gears in a full-size truck. I'm about it, I like it, it's very convenient. It's honestly, once you adjust to it, it's amazing, it's very easy, it's just thoughtless. It's like boom, boom. It's easy, it's so easy, but strange at the same time. Well, that quickly hit 103 degrees. Jeez, okay. Um, so let's, let's not break down out here because that would kind of suck. That was pretty disappointing right there. I mean, this is not that steep of a climb at all. In fact, it's 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 really not steep at all, to be honest, to justify that sort of lack in performance. My Silverado walks up this no problem. Now, the main difference between the Ram and the Silverado are the tires. That's where these lack performance because these are, they're both Toyo Open Countries, but these are the RTs. The RTs aren't very aggressive at all. I mean, they're basically street tires with like an all-terrain look to them but these are not built for off-road whatsoever. I have the ATs, the all-terrains, on the Silverado, the Toyo Open Country all-terrains, and that right there makes all the difference in the world. Both my trucks are two by, and they both have the LSD in the rear axle, so it's pretty much the exact same comparison. The tires right here make all the difference in the world. These ones right here, <laughs> they're not it. So if you want some like off-road capabilities on a two by, definitely the Toyo ATs. I recommend those 100% because <laughs> these ones right here, they're just not it. It's it's almost like a street tire with more toward an all-terrain look. If you want more of an aggressive look, but performance-wise, I it, it's not it. It's, it's just not it at all. So I feel like now is the appropriate time to kind of update you guys on what's new with the Ram since it hasn't made an appearance on the channel for a little while now. My channel's been all about the Silverado, so I'll bring back some of the Ram content for you guys. But yeah, 17,400 miles in it now. It's been properly broken in. This is a 2020 Ram Laramie wrapped in 3M's Battleship Gray and a satin finish. The roof wrapped in 3M satin black. Blacked out the Ram head in the back there and the Magnaflow exhaust here in the rear. 20 by nine, I believe. Pro Comp wheels, uh, 35, 1250, 20s, Toyo RTs. Good tire on road, not so great off road. Now you guys may also notice we have some amp running boards as well. So put them on the Silverado, 
They were on this truck first. Had to put them on the Silverado afterwards because those right there are a game changer. If you have anything above a leveling kit, that right there is a major, major key. Also, we have a new sound system here as well. So there's a custom box here built with two JL Audio subs there on the bottom and an amp as well, which all looks really nice. It's all custom fitted and the seat goes down perfectly on top. So that's awesome right there. It sounds really good. Nice power. You can hear it from the outside of the truck from like four blocks away. It's awesome. It's great. But yeah, I mean, I'll have a more thorough like update video in the very near future on sort of my review of ownership with this truck for the last 17,000 some odd miles. All right. So I turned the truck towards the sun to show you guys a minor little mishap we have here on the front end. So you guys may have already noticed that we do have some damage here on the passenger side portion of the front bumper and the driver's side as well. The driver's side's not that bad at all. I mean, it's definitely visible, but it didn't go through the clear coat even. It barely grazed the wrap enough to remove it, and that's all there is to that side. So pretty minor on that side. That part's pretty, pretty straightforward. But over here, this side's a little more aggressive. Still not that bad, but also got the fender flare and this piece of the front end as well. But the front bumper right here sustained most of the damage. Not that bad though. There's one little nick right here, that white spot right there you see on the paint itself. That part right there can be buffed off pretty easy, no big deal. But I'm pretty stoked on how the wrap took the majority of the beating. That right there is amazing. So just a little message to whoever hit the front of my truck and the dash, I appreciate that. Unfortunately, it caught me slipping because that day, I didn't have a dash cam in my windshield because when I bought the new Silverado, I pulled the dash cam out of this truck and put it in that truck because I was daily driving that truck more often. So that day, there was nothing to record what happened. Now the cool thing about my Valve dash cam is it can record while the truck is parked as well because it has a reserve battery built into it, which means when the truck like feels like a, a jolt, it gets shooken up or something like that, or it hits it, whatever it may be, even a strong gust of wind sometimes will activate the camera for 15 seconds. It would have recorded exactly what happened and I could have at least had a visual as to what exactly happened. It was more of like, I'm curious how this went down because it's not that big of a deal. It's just a wrap. I can rewrap the front bumper, no problem at all. Even if the person was there to be accountable for it and was like, look, I'm so sorry. They showed remorse and it was an accident. Then I would have just been like, you know what? You're good. Like, have a good day. It's not that big of a deal. If anything, you want to pay for the material to cover the wrap to rewrap the front bumper. I'll take that, but if it's not in your budget, you can't like afford that, then that's totally fine. I don't even know when exactly where or when this happened. All I know is I came out to my truck one morning and there was damage all over the front bumper. So it happened at some point the previous day, throughout my day in one of the parking lots I was in is all I know. A person could have been a car, could have been a bike. I have no idea, but I live my life a little bit differently and understand that things that happen like this, that someone does, there's usually a reason for that. Maybe that person was like super young and have never experienced something like this happening and saw this, you know, what could be deemed as a pretty expensive truck with a fancy wrap on it. And it's probably gonna be a very expensive thing to repair, which normally, I mean, this kind of would be because if I did this like professionally at a shop, which I do professionally myself, but if I had to go to a shop to have it done professionally and pay them for not only material, but time, labor, all that kind of stuff, then it'd be a little more expensive, obviously. But since I do it myself, it's even less of a big deal at all because the cost of material for this much, you know, Battleship Gray is probably like, I don't know, maybe a hundred bucks. So it's super, super minor, super easy to repair after a couple hours of my time and a hundred bucks. This is like, it never even happened. So honestly, not that big of a deal one bit, even if it was the entire front end or the bumper, end of the day, this can all be fixed. So we're all good. Still, next time, leave a note, yo. So I can't even get this wrap right now for an undisclosed amount of time. So hopefully it restocks sometime in the near future. Until that point, I'm rocking the bruised up front bumper on my Ram. So thank you to whoever did this. I mean, it's not that bad. If you squint your eyes and like tilt your head to the left a little bit, it's, it's really not that bad, but it's still, it's still ugly for sure. Also some very exciting news dropping very, very soon, a brand new line of merch. You guys are not ready for this. I've been working on this for quite some time. I'm working with graphic designer, branding, logo, all that kind of stuff, finding the best t-shirts, the best materials, best fit, all that kind of stuff. Everything is going to be absolutely on point, but that is all I have for you guys today. As always, hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you guys on the next one. Till then, peace out.